Start audio, turn off that, start the video. Okay, stop touching the mics there, okay. Hey, folks, welcome to the Team Voxel Bob Show. This is episode 99, I think. Pretty sure it's episode 99. I know it's not 100, that's all I need to know. If it was like 100 and I didn't even know it was episode 100, I would, I would have to like cancel this i would have to like put this out later on sequentially this could be the hundredth episode but i'm pretty sure that it's the 99th episode of the tf actual web show he could come to you live pre-recorded but i but i was alive when i did this this feels live right now i mean you know the internet's connected to my how i the camera is connected to a computer that is connected to a modem so therefore it fe i could be live if i just pressed a button in the software that's how futuristic today is oh boy that opened up a can of worms already we're not even done with the intro that opened up a can of worms it's an oxymoron it's, well it sounds futuristic but we but it is the future. How could you say it sounds futuristic if it is the future that you're talking about? Like, it's futuristic. That's the, like, the sense that it, it feels technologically cool. It's novel. You know, futuristic. It's futuristic. I can just press the button and I'm live broadcasting on my own private channel that, you know, it's like nobody will see it. It's like public access. It's cool that you could just do that. But we're gonna get into that later. This is the this is the this is the intro part of the show where I'm still just trying to get through that. Thank you for joining me. My name is Tim Weichelbaum, and you know this is episode ninety nine. It is episode ninety nine. If it was the hundredth episode, like you know, sequentially without me realizing it, I'm gonna shelve it, and we'll figure out what to do with it later. We'll probably like put it together with. The real 100th episode, I use air quotes here, using air quotes for real, because um, that won't even be the real. Um, the real 100th episode will be this. What you're seeing now, if I mislabeled all of the last episodes before this, uh, you know, if I consider one, if I release one that wasn't released for, whatever. This probably isn't the 100th episode, but if it is, sequentially, canonically, canonically, it's not. I'm the director, producer of this show, Most, but more importantly than that, I'm the executive producer and director. So, that's, so you know, director, who, that kind of usually implies there's only one. So, forget about that. I'm the producer the executive producer, so like, so like, it's like, I decide when, uh, when the hundredth episode, so like, uh, canonically, you know, it'll say the hundredth episode was released on 2024 June or whenever it's coming out. I don't know when it's coming out, but that's, it'll, but it'll be like, uh, whatever I decide to do, it'll be like phony because it'll be like, It'll be like, you know, whatever the word I'm looking for, uh, put together synthetically, you know, con con instead of organically. And then we'll put a little footnote and say, well, actually, this isn't the sequentially. We actually, the 99th was the actual 100th, so never. So here's a clip of that, because I'm going to shelve this one. You're not going to see this until this comes out years later, if... In fact, it was not the 99th. If this is the 100th episode, you're going to see this in a footnote on the fake one that I put together synthetically, you know, contrive, that I contrive into a 100th. It'll say, by the way, this isn't technically the 100th time I've done this show. The 100th time I've done this, I didn't know it was the 100th episode, so I'm just wearing it. I'm just looking normal, doing nothing special. But here it is. Here's a little clip from it. So that's all you will see of this. Thankfully, I'm pretty sure 
This is the 99. And who am I thanking? You, you can't really thank yourself for hope. You can't just be like, thankfully, I have a lot of hope that this is the 99th episode. That is, that's not really something to be thankful for that you th that you hope something. So I'm going to reword that. Thankfully, I'm pretty sure. So I am thankful for being sure, pretty sure, you know. I'm thankful that I am sh just pretty certain that this is the... So I'm thankful for... Because, um, you know, the knowledge could be true or not. But what I'm thankful for is that I'm at least confident in my memory. I'm thankful for, for the fact that I cannot completely disregard my short-term memory. It's getting pretty bad. It's getting pretty bad, you know. And that brings me to the first topic of the show, which, you know, this is a show. That's not the first topic of the show. I was going to do a sober update, but then I realized, who cares? Is this a vlog? If it was, that's I would do a sober update, but I don't really like doing that anymore because drugs. So I guess okay, not for me specifically because it's not a it's not a vlog. This is about something. This is about everybody. That I'm talking. This is about like um, me. Okay, I can't do this. Ethan, you're talking about yourself or not. You can't just talk about a hypothetical person that is similar to you because then you're going to mislead people because then you're going to be like, well, if you are this person, then maybe you should, maybe you, you sh this uh, advice applies to you. But if it's not even a real person that it applies to, then it's probably not good advice. So I'm not going to give it. So the advice was to just take drugs, you know, to just take drugs. That's what the advice would have been in the sober part of it. Because I think drugs get you to where you need to be to where you don't have to take drugs anymore. Because if you don't take drugs, you're only going to be thinking about drugs. Mm. And you're not going to get anything done all day because all you're doing is scrounging up money and resources to get the drugs. And then once you finally get the drugs, you feel good. But you're too tired to do shit with your life while on the damn drugs because you spent so much energy getting them. Now that it's easy to get drugs, that's not too big of a problem. Just get the damn drugs. Don't overdose. You don't take the kinds that you could overdose on. Be smart about it. But if you need drugs, you know who you are. That's how you do it. That's how you give advice to everybody. or to, 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 That's how you avoid the conflict that I was just talking about. You just say, you know who you... If you need drugs to function in life, you know who you are. Then by all means, by not all means, by some means, take, the, take just the amount that you need to function as an adult. Not as a child, as an adult. We want to function as an adult. That's the thing. We want to function as an adult. I don't like saying the T's at the end of words because it causes a bad symbol. It sounds, you know, it, it, it's expensive to edit out the T sound. So you just leave them off. Some I picked up. Some I picked up from my other hobby that also I don't get paid from as a singer. Some I learned from my amateur career as a singer is just don't don't even say the t's or the s's at the end of words nobody's gonna care nobody's gonna care no songs are good because of this sound t s those two sounds s t okay drums i take that back drums are good because of that t -t -t -t. But that's not a human noise that's a drum noise Drums are allowed to have that noise. Sibilance. Drums are allowed to have that. Human voices don't benefit from that. No, like nobody. Okay. It's a soothing sound, I guess, in certain contexts. But in general, I don't like it because it messes up this, the uh, waveform that I'm, I'm. The beautiful waveform gets all messed up. And this happens in music of uh, professional levels. So I just avoid the problem by not even pronouncing that part of the alphabet or that part of 
the English language. I just omit the part of the English language that isn't beneficial to music. Why, why, why the hell shouldn't I? Why the hell should I keep it in there? Some languages are better for music than others. Some pieces of gear are more musical than other pieces of gear. Like they say, like some pieces of gear are only made for broadcasting and others were made for more like classical music. That's, act that's actually, they were made for different. And the people in the recording engineers like, oh, this, this, this EQ is very musical. And like, you don't know what he means by that until you hear it for yourself. I don't know. It just has to do with saturation of the way of the analog waveform being saturated. So I don't fucking know. It just sounds good. You know when you hear it. You know it when you hear it. And it costs so much money to get the the, the result. To get the, well, you know, it's getting cheaper actually, you know. Okay, we're not just going to only talk about what I'm using to make the thing that I, that, that isn't enjoyable. Hey, here's how I'm making the thing that isn't good. Hey, here's how the here's how the intricate here's all the inventions that had to be invented in the 20th century for this podcast to to be not good enough to listen to. Here's how much money I put into this podcast. It's, it's about you know the content. Sometimes you need good uh, tools to motivate you to do your best or even to uh, to motivate you to, to, not to motivate you see i don't want to mislead people on this part because i'm not joe rogan i don't subscribe to his politics of just saying whatever he wants spewing out facts and just being like yeah yeah go google that jamie oh okay yeah that kind of confirms what i just said so therefore i'm just going to keep saying it now i don't do that when I talk, I fucking analyze. So, I forgot. I forgot what I was saying. But, but uh, oh yeah, the gear. If you have high quality gear, it won't make you better as a podcast, at any, as a broadcaster, as a singer, just because you have good gear. But if you already are good enough to do it, then the good gear will possibly influence you. To actually do the work, to actually finish the projects because you'll have the tools to, to do a good enough job. Because you'll be like, oh, well, that sounds really good, so I might as well keep going. I might as well actually like use my gifts that I honed because I have the tools to actually take the most out of them. To... Wow. So, now, so what I'm saying basically is... I'm still not tr tr going to tr prepare. All right. So I've been watching a lot of Johnny Carson. Now they're out of topics. So I guess we're just going to go to the iPad because that's what it's there for. The iPad, I don't know if you know this, that's to tell me what to talk about if, you know, if I need to know. It's a teleprompt, basically. It just It just tells me the topics. It doesn't tell me the actual... It's not a Joe Biden problem. It's not just here's exactly what. No, it's just telling me the topics. And one of the topics is Johnny Carson. And speaking of drugs, he smoked a lot of cigarettes. And he said, Sometimes you just want to smoke. But it's, then that brings me to another pretentious topic is that smoke free studio. See, most people that do music recording, uh, they buy gear used sometimes. And when they buy it used, it says in the eBay listing, this was used in a smoke-free studio, which is probably not true. Nobody who's cool and worth a damn in the music industry doesn't smoke. Nobody. Nobody doesn't smoke who does music. Like, everybody, literally, who's ever made a music song, Taylor Swift... Bob Marley, Louis Anderson, or Armstrong. They all were smoking directly into the microphone. So there's no way that any good recording studio is a smoke-free. 
So that just means it's a failed recording. And you don't want to buy equipment from a failed recording. That just is a haunted, that's a t bad omen. You're not going to get success with somebody else's failed smoke-free gear. I'd rather have degraded capsules in, the, in my microphone that, from, from a talented smoker. But then the, the value would actually go up. On, like if Tom Petty... Or, the reason I know this is because I was in the market for a vintage microphone and just for fun, I just sorted by the most expensive because it's, it's free to look. And, and one of the most expensive vintage microphones was a U47 Telefunken used by uh, Stevie Wonder to record uh, just the harmonica. Just the harmonica on uh, Songs in the Key of Life, and it was going for $50,000 on the dot. So that was a little bit inflated, because 50000 where do they get that number from? That's a pretty round number. So they inflated because Stevie Wonder used it. For just the harmonica, though. But that's a legendary album, though. So it, it'd be cool to have that microphone. But 50k, I'm not. I wouldn't do that, because I'm not rich enough. And that's it. That's the only reason. If I was rich enough, I wouldn't. I would do it. Okay. So moving on, we explained uh, drugs. I think we explained it. You know, it takes maturity. The viewer discretion is is advised before you take drugs. Um, but. Really, you know, I don't really give a shit what you do in your personal life. I guess what I'm saying, when people say viewer discretion is advised, what they mean is you don't have to listen to this, you know. You don't have to fucking watch. You don't have to fucking watch this. I don't know. They don't have that in books. Have you noticed that? There's no books that say parental advisory. This book is fucking going to make your kid, you know, expose your kid to explicit like they, they don't give a fuck about that in books because books you have to actually open them and read them it's a little different than tv where it actually you turn it on and you're just as good at it as everybody else books is a skill so who cares if it has anything the most grisly you know the most grisly thing could be in a book but they don't say reader discretion is advised because readers are smart. They know. They're not fucking it. They don't read books and go, oh, I want to do that. They don't have that. But libraries don't have signs on the door or whatever the fuck. They don't have uh, banners. They don't have signs or stickers. They don't have labels on the box. Saying like nutrition facts, you know, we turn it over and it says, Warning, this book might cause you to do dumb things. I might, th this book, viewer discretion, it doesn't say that, it doesn't say reader discretion. I know I'm spending a lot of time on this bit, this premise of for like for the for a joke or something, but like it's not a joke. Um, it's, it's interesting how you, you could, you, you, you like books, people that read books aren't fucking idiots. They don't open a book. They don't read off 800 page book and then impulsively go, Oh, uh, I want to do that too. I want to take a bunch of drugs like Ernest Hemingway or whatever that free and low than lost. Like, yeah. Cause people who read books. They aren't idiots. They actually, they're using their head. People that watch TV, it takes no energy. It takes no mental energy. It takes no effort. It takes no IQ points to be watching a TV show and it shows you doing drugs and it looks cool. Yeah, books are different. Books could glorify drugs way worse than movies. But nobody cares because nobody reads them. So if I say something that might sound insane or bad advice like that drugs are okay, I'm saying that under the guise of that you're smart enough to know that this is for entertainment purposes and viewers, because you're a fucking idiot. 
So, but I'm sorry to keep beating a dead horse, but like all I'm trying to illustrate is that. And I just found this out myself a couple of years ago. The term viewer discretion advice, that doesn't mean they're telling you don't take us seriously. They're saying, I mean, that is what they're saying, but it has nothing really to do with. It could be misinterpreted as like, oh, are they telling me to not listen to what they're saying? No, they're not even saying that. They're saying, hey, idiot, you know, you don't have to watch this. That's what discretion means. That's what they're saying. They're saying, you know, you could decide not to watch this. It's up to you. It's at your discretion to not fucking watch. That's that's like the legal term or the legal way of saying nobody's fucking forcing you to watch this, you idiot. That's why they have to do that. Because with books, they don't have to. Because... Most people don't read books. And the ones that do, they don't fucking listen to the books. They understand that they're just books. Does this make sense? They actually learn from the book. They learn, like, the message of the book. They learn the message. I forgot the, 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 the word I'm looking for, the moral, you know, like, you know, like, Books, even if they're nonfiction, they usually kind of have like a moral, like they have like a, a point to them. And you can kind of get a sense of what the hell the book is kind of going to be telling you about even like before you even read it. So people that read books, they actually kind of learn. People that watch movies and shows on TV, especially uh, broadcast TV, uh, over the air TV that, you know, not cable, just the kind that anybody could get. That's even, gotta be even careful, carefuler. And that's why we're talking about Johnny Carson, baby. That's the whole point of why we're talking about Johnny. Okay, the reason that this all comes back to Johnny Carson is because he was on TV. Not just TV, he was on. Um, what do you call it? Actual over-the-air broadcast TV. Not cable. Not digital. It didn't go under the ground. No. Antennae. Over-the-air. Invisible waves. Radio waves. From huge antennas that anybody with a TV could get. Not cable. Cable came a little later for idiots that couldn't get access to an antenna, so they force-fed them a cable. That's second class. And if, if you are good enough to be on real TV, which is the kind that goes through the antennas, you have to be pretty talented because that's going to be seen by anybody with a TV. Not cable. People with cable, you got to pay for that. You got to buy a cable box or some shit. I don't know. Not anymore. It's not the 80s, but, anymore, but like, that's what you had to do. You had to get, that was extra. No. I'm talking about just TV. That's Johnny Carson. That's why he was so fucking famous. Because there wasn't that many people just on TV every freaking day. Not cable. I'm talking about TV. Like the kind that you just turn it on and boom, it's just right there. Ra radio fucking waves. It's like super simple technology. So it better be good. What it, what it, what comes on it across America that you don't even need a cable, but you know all you need is the TV and it. Of course, it, it better be fucking good because a shitload of people are gonna see it. And another thing that I thought about with this whole Johnny Carson business is okay. I don't I didn't really say anything about him yet, but just the whole business of 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 around him, you know. In television, and in the business behind it, in networks. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about networks. There's cable, and then there's networks. There's only like four of them in the whole country. How do you become a new network? Well, either you're, you, you can't, or you're just so rich that you force yourself into it. I don't know. If you're rich enough, then you can get your own network. But it's probably not, not going to happen. So there's only so many networks that are God-given and yeah, they're the ones that get access to the prime time real estate 
across the country and it still has to go through antennas for some reason anyway so that's fascinating i, don't, I can't believe i just learned about like i just learned about what tv like the difference between cable and just tv and what a tell like it's, it's so basic terrestrial radio and terrestrial tv and like it just never really occurred to me why there is a huge cliff between Johnny Carson and what we have now. There was, everybody just tuned in to the same signal. And Howard Stern comes up because he helped me out, under, he helped me understand this a little bit. Because when Jay Leno took over for Carson, Stern went on, Howard Stern went on there and he was like, you know, I think it was Letterman. Yeah, it was Letterman and uh, not, Leto, not Leno. He was telling Letterman, you know, you're on a network t uh, show, which there's only so many of. There's only like four network TV shows at any given time because there's only four networks, right? And they only have four hours a day that they could broadcast. So how much time is that? Not that much. So there's only like, what, five shows on TV? Even to this day, there's not that many TV shows on like actually that you could that are like actually being broadcast at any given time because there's still only five networks or four however many there hasn't been any increase in networks you would think it wouldn't matter why would it matter it's arbitrary now now we could just do it on the internet you would think it's just arbitrary now and it is now, yes, it's pretty arbitrary, but there's still the, the legacy networks. Why? When are they going to fizzle out or merge into one? And then what, even then, what is the point of them then? They're no different than any other content provider, right? So now I look like an idiot because now I'm, now I don't understand what the hell I'm talking about. But anyway, Howard Stern was telling Letterman, hey, idiot. There's only one of you. You're, you know, there's you. There's the other guy, Leno. Carson's out. You're only getting paid a million bucks a year. You're get, that's ridiculous. You could be getting paid a lot more because he understood the business side of things. That's super rare for the talent to also understand the entire business. That's rare. That's like a Steve Jobs type of situation that's how howard stern understood radio he was not just the guy who understood the business he was also the talent though he was the talent and he understood the business well enough to redo the business himself that's the type of genius that is like what i'm all about i'm all about people that just take an industry and go yeah i see what how that is that's stupid it's set up a certain way because of arbitrary reasons and people get greedy and they get too much power at the top of these networks and they just these clowns at the top of the networks don't know what the hell they're doing creatively they're just businessmen so howard stern was smart enough to be just as good as any of those businessmen but he also was the talent so that's why he's a fucking billionaire if you're the fucking talent and a businessman the sky's the fucking limit. But don't be a narcissist, though, too. That's another stuff. You got to know when to reel it back. You got to know your limits. You got to know your uh, realm of competence, whatever the hell it's called. Warren Buffett. Circle of competence. You got to know that. Don't be a douche. Don't be a douche. But yeah, it's very inspirational when you see somebody just understands completely an industry, revolutionizes it, has confidence and tells you know they say ahead of time i'm i know what i'm doing they do it steve jobs was also like that i don't know if he, he like he was it's you know he was talented but in a way that was hard to pinpoint hard to pin down because he he wasn't the guy actually doing the the design he wasn't the dude actually doing the blueprinting but he had enormous it, unmeasurable talent. Like, it's, if you could measure it, it would be enormous. It's just that, how do you measure his type of talent? It's so 
rarely uh, celebrated his type of time. He understood things, that, and then he understood how to actually implement... Like, he knew what was wrong with the current products on the market. He knew what he wanted to do better. So he did... There was design involved. He certainly was a designer. But then to actually uh, do it successful i don't know you know there's more than just him obviously but just that type of without him it wouldn't have happened though he was the spearhead and that's all i'm talking about i'm just talking about being that first person to be like okay i'm gonna be the one to actually take the initiative and the risk because it's a calculated risk that i'm willing to take is opportunity is i mean the flip side of risk if you don't take a risk you're missing out on an opportunity that's a flip side of losing out on a, on a okay this is becoming a lecture and i did not mean it to be but i'm doing pretty well so i, I can't lie i'm looking at my voice going into these this new equipment that i got and it's fucking awesome you can see all these little light meters going up and it's like going through a, a different it's going through a, diff a signal chain instead of just directly into my interface it's going through a preamp and then a compressor and then a, a new okay i didn't want to talk about it but i got okay it's just i did talk about how gear if you have good gear then it'll motivate you to actually finish your work because you'll be like well i spent all this money and this is my freaking job so i don't you know i gotta do this more often i can't just do this whenever the whenever i feel no, I got to do this every week because that's what this whole room is designed for. This is a podcasting room. It's a music room. And, and uh, I, I, I do music. Did I mention that? I'm a musician and that's why I got the guitar on the wall. It's to remind me that I'm a musician because without that, I wouldn't. I don't think there'd be any evidence. And even that is not evidence. Just because you own a guitar is not evidence. But I will be releasing uh, music at some point. It's just so long. It just takes so long. It's just so not soon. You know, I'm not like it's not soon. It's not coming out soon. I got to finish the whole album and I got I to gotta mix it and then master it. And then I can start releasing it releasing the songs one by one or i don't fucking but i'm i'm doing songs very slowly and it's not about finishing it's not about that you know i really would like to i that's the goal i have to or else that'd be a problem i mean it's my it's my job right now to produce to finish this album self-produced self nothing performed Everything else not done. I didn't write it. Anyway, I'm just doing that to, to uh, well, because what else, what's the alternative? You're supposed to do stuff in life. I don't know if you know this, but one of the, the seven s deadly sins is um, sloth. So you're not supposed to just sit around all day. That's not what life is. You're not supposed to just do nothing. You know, you can meditate. That doesn't, that's different. You're not supposed to just let day in, day out go by with you just not producing anything. You're also you're gonna feel like a loser. Unless you are a loser, then you won't necessarily feel like one. That's the thing about loser dumb. Loserism, if you prefer. Loserism, the problem with it is that you don't always know it until it's too late when it's happening. Because something might happen. That won't you won't feel the blow of loserism happening in real time. It might be years later that you even realize, oh man, that was a loser thing to do, or man, was I going down the path of loserism in that point in my life? You know, it's just little glimpses in little angles or little behaviors is what it comes down to. Loserism. I guess comes down to behavior. I don't look at it as what happens to a person. I look at it as the attitude and the behavior they're in. You could be a loser who is um, doing well. 
on paper. You know, you cut if you're not producing anything. I don't know. It's just it's something I just found out is that if you just let yourself go, not physically, but if you let yourself go creatively, you will feel dead inside and not dead literally like, they, like oh, I have no, no, you'll have, you'll have emotions. You won't be in a comatose state. You'll be dead inside in the sense that you're not fulfilled. You just be, you'll be unfulfilled in a zombie-like unfulfilled state. If you're creatively unfulfilled, so that's your obligation. You know, you can't let yourself go creatively. So you have a responsibility if you have the opportunity to use that opportunity to be creative if you have the desire and the, uh, that's it. You just need the desire. You know, who cares if you have the abilities? You'll find out eventually what abilities you don't have. I am finding out that really, you know, most people, you can gain any ability you want. It's like, okay, do I want to, how much time do I want to dedicate to this ability out of all the millions of abilities out there? Do I have to learn every instrument? Can I outsource anything about this job? Yes, I mean, I, I personally... I don't want to, though. That's the thing. I want, I'd rather learn how to do it myself. And if I can't, then I'll figure out the next solution. But so far, there hasn't been anything I can't play on any instrument. It's just that, do I want to spend the time to learn it? Why not? I got the time. How long could it take to master a particular song? Or, I don't, you know... It, if you put in enough time, eventually you will figure it out. So that's what I'm at. That's what I'm doing. It's like, okay, you know, I'm, I, I, I'm not great at guitar, but I used to think I wasn't great at anything, So like, and then I got good at it. So like that could apply to guitar. That could apply to any instrument, even drums, which I... It's another one that's like, I thought I would never be a drummer, but and it's because I have terrible rhythm. But I also used to say that I have terrible pitch and then I got really good at, now I almost have really good pitch, I would say. And it used to be, I would say, pretty bad. Like I used to be like average pitch level, like just the ability to hear pitches and whatever, discern or singing pitch or just tell if I'm on pitch. I would say I was below average to, to mid, to average. So no talent whatsoever, zero talent, if anything, a deficit for pitch. Now, I'm above average at pitch. You could, I, I, I could sing a harmony on top of a pitch, and it would be pretty good. I don't know. It would be pitch correct. It would be like the right pitch. And that's easy, like that's effortless almost, as it should be. And that's a beautiful, that's the thing of a fucking... I don't know if it is beautiful, it's frustrating as fuck, but once you get through the excruciating, frustratingly tense part of music, it becomes effortless, and then it's like all you want to do for the rest of it's like all you want to do all day long. Once you do get competent at an at a instrument, uh, then it becomes super pleasurable because you're good at it. You get pleasure out of just doing it. You're not just, it's not an uphill battle. It's like, fuck, I suck. Who would want to do this? That's how I am with guitar. With, with guitar, I go, who the hell would want to do this all day? But then once you start learning it, once you start nailing, you slowly break down the licks that you're trying to learn and you start getting it and you start getting it to the point where it's effortless and you go, I can't even... I thought I would never get this, and now I could play it effortlessly with style and with grace, you know, like I could perfectly ease, you know, put the right tension on the part, you know, I just got it down. That's what happens if you put the work in, you'll eventually make progress, and then it becomes kind of fun, and then you get addicted to it, like, fuck, now I just only want to, I want to play more guitar. I want to learn more riffs. You get you get pleasure out of the learning, the the mastery process of it. 
So why can't I do that with everything else, with any instrument? You know, like why can't I do that with rhythm? Rhythm guitar is, is already rhythm. It's hard enough to do that. Playing bass guitar on rhythm in time is extremely difficult. Playing any instrument perfectly in time is difficult for even the best of the best masters. So yeah, it's going to probably take some time. But does that mean I should just give up? Because pitch, I used to be pretty uh, tone deaf. I used to sound like every other person who doesn't know how to sing. I'd be like, well, you know how like the typical person just sounds like their, the, like their voice, like you could tell what note they're going for, but it's always perfectly wrong. Or like, you know, like you could tell what they're going for, but it's just super out of tune, like just not in tune. That's how I used to sing when I was 12 and then I 15, 17 is when I got serious about, you know what? I kind of actually wouldn't mind, wouldn't mind actually kind of getting kind of competent at it or at least singing and you got to start with pitch. You got to start with pitch, right? Maybe not. Probably not. Start like I'm not a fuck. I don't fuck at all. Probably start with just how to do it, how to produce a note, how to make a note. Who cares if it's the right note? Who cares if it's in tune? Who gives a crap? But anyway, I used to suck at that. I used to just, I used to sing like anybody, like any average person off the street. So you could learn how to do stuff. Not that I'm good. Not that I'm a good singer. But uh, but I've improved. Is all I'm saying. Like when I hear myself now, I go, oh, okay. At least I've gotten better. At least I am doing what I'm trying to do. Like at least the sound, the right sound came out. The right note came out of my fucking. So, you know, I'm just saying, why can't I do that with any instrument? Because with music, or I mean with vocals, I'm getting to the point where I have confidence. And that's the most fun part to record. So I save it for the very end because it's the most expressive part of the song for me. Because that's where my m most uh, competence lies. So, but who cares? Why can't you be a multi-instrumentalist? It just takes time. It's not like you can only pick one. You don't have to only pick one to get the most out of You could be good at more than one instrument. It just takes more time. So anyway, hey, oh, fucking what do I know? So I'm going to buy be purchasing. So all that comes down to is that I'm convincing myself to purchase more instruments that I w normally wouldn't have needed to buy. That's all this really comes down to is like, I like to buy stuff. That's it. Most musicians like to buy stuff. They don't like to play. Once they get something to play, they, they put it on a wall. You know, they buy a fancy microphone. It sits in a box. So they could sell it maybe 20 years later and say that it was never used. It just sat in a box in a smoke-free studio. Nope. Not me. I'm using all this shit. I've got this iPad just to look at, um, to tell me what notes to play. It's like a music, uh, music sheet. That's all I got it for. I already had a perfectly good iPad, but it wasn't big enough. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta be rich to be a musician in this day and age. Cause can you imagine playing music and not having a 12 inch iPad next to your face the whole time? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pro Tools, man. Again, because back in the day, they didn't have iPads. They had tape machines and boy! You could punch in, but couldn't pick, you couldn't fix it later. Now you could do anything. But I still want to record a good signal in because you can't fix everything in post-production. And it's not fun to have to do. It's more fun to don't fucking do that, right? So I listen after I record and I go, okay, that's almost up to my standards because I have standards that I know when it's good enough man like I hear it in the mix I hear it soloed and I go okay you fuck you messed up that part because I want you know if I play it good I'll be done I'll be like, okay I finally think I'm ready to move on but like this one guitar part that I've been working on this whole year 
I'm not done. Every time I listen to it, I go, okay, that part needs to be slightly better. You need to do another take. I haven't gotten a take yet. I've been working on it for months. Not all day, every day, but hour. I've put in so many hours just learning this fucking rhythm track. It's not even, it's not soloing. The soloing is not hard. It's just the, ry the rhythm, rhythm guitar. That's where the money's at. So if you're good at rhythm guitar, you could get gigs. I'm not saying I'm not good at rhythm guitar. If, if I'm barely good at you know, but if I was confident enough in my own playing with rhythm guitar, as I am with singing, that would be a source of income. On uh, airgigs.com, I would just be listing that right along with my vocal. So anyway, I'm a vocalist for hire on airgigs.com, and I'm charging currently thirty dollars a song. That comes with a lot of heavy lifting, a lot of work goes into that thirty dollars. And I'm pretty good at marketing myself, as you could see. I mean, I you know, this whole episode will just be. I don't want to continue down that path of marketing myself. God forbid. Anyway, that's it. We're just that's the that's the update on the studio and then the Johnny Carson situation and to put a bow on that to get to the bottom line on that the Howard Stern and him figuring out show business and being on the front and back end or at least being involved on the back end in a way that represents himself in a way that he got the maximum what he was worth like the reason Howard Stern got gets paid you know five hundred million dollars and Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan, next guy, he's the new Howard Stern. He got paid, he, he's paid astronomical amounts too. However much he's getting paid, you know, billions at this point. Because he, I get, he's smart. The business, he, I don't know, he's got to be your own boss. Okay, I mean, so, so how would I get into the world of showbiz? Well, so I, you know, talent, yeah, but I, you know, I, don't, I don't really want to be the talent. But I have talent in other kind of talent. Not the front end talent i got the back end talent where i am very good at the business side and the creative side but that doesn't mean i'm going to be a creative I, I just i'm just good at thinking of shit you know thinking of business shit like that you know? so if you're worth a certain amount you might as well get paid that much if you see somebody getting, getting paid a million dollars they're probably worth it you know i used to be like oh man jay leno gets paid 30 million a year and it just seemed like so much but like yeah but he's probably they probably have more than that to pay him. They're not just doing it out of like goodwill. They're not just doing it as like a, hey, well, you know, let's just try this. No, they, they have the money. It's an ad revenue company. It's just, you know, that's another thing that I never really realized that all TV is, and I guess all radio too, if it's not government, if it's not government funded all it is is just advertisements just a medium to sell advertise and you know that sounds like no shit sherlock you didn't know that? It's like yeah no i knew that but not really i didn't know that aside from hbo hbo and uh, and other premium content services like netflix obviously they don't have ads but before that all if, anytime you saw a tv show the whole reason you saw the stupid TV show was so it could sell ads. That's why it was made. That's why all this creativity and comedic genius went into it and money for writers from from uh, Ivy League, you know, expensive writers. Real money went into this creative piece of work because to sell ads. I don't know why I didn't get that. I thought it would be more wholesome... It is wholesome. It's mo money is whole. You know that's two things. It's a, it, It's not just. It's not lopsided. It's not asymmetrical. Money goes in. A product comes out that hopefully sells to produce more. Money, a profit. That's how it fucking is. So who gives a crap if you're in show business? That just means you're working for some guy who wants to make money from ads. That really takes the luster out of being a uh, uh, in show business. It still takes a lot. You know, it's still the odds are stacked against you, but who cares? Because all your it's just a business thing. You, I mean, it, it, like all you're doing by being in a TV show is catering 
to a business that is trying to sell business, uh, ads, yes, you're trying to be entertaining. But the goal is to sell ads. So who cares? I mean, okay. So whoopee. So you're not commercial if you're not in show. Because you could be just as talented, but you're not commercializing. Your, your, your talent is not being, uh, what's the word? Exploited for ads. Whoa. Well, I'm, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I can't bow to you then. You're not on the in group. Johnny Carson was on the in group. He was talented, man. It, he was good at selling ads. That's all he was good at. Because ads are just other companies, just other rich asses, just other people, individuals that are rich, and, you know, not an individual, generally a company could be owned by an individual. Or at least it's just one guy usually that comes up with the whole plan anyway, you know, the whole ethos of the company. Really, but it's just one guy. You know, for the who cares? Who cares? Even if it isn't, it could be. Warren Buffett is, you know, it's one of the biggest companies. Berkshire Hathaway is one of the biggest companies in the world. That's just one guy. So I don't give a fuck who you are. Person on the other side of the area, you know. So that really takes away the um, the glamour. But I, I'm trying to be. That, that's not. That, that's not a bad thing, though. That is a great thing to realize as soon as possible. If you are trying to be in show, which I'm not. I am in show business, but I'm not trying. Okay. I got a, I got this thing. I am in show business. I'm a very, I'm successful. That's why I don't hear about me talking about it so much because you don't hear about people. You only hear from the desperate people. Like, oh, yeah, someday I will do something big. No, I am in show business and this is what you're seeing. My product is what you freaking see. You don't like it? I don't give a fuck. You're not my target demographic then. Oh, you want me to define my target demographic? Do I, you're, are you an advertiser? Then I don't have to. And also, maybe this isn't even for advertisers. Maybe this is, is is just for the target demographic. And maybe I don't really want to sell ads to them. Maybe I just want them to just be some nebulous, you know, audience that may not even exist on this planet. Maybe I don't give a crap about that. So there you go. I forgot why I got on this subject. Oh, yeah. So, but that's what I'm doing. That's still show business. Is there money coming in? Okay, maybe not yet quite enough. Maybe that's the part where we got to figure out. Maybe that's the part we got to figure out. Maybe business is kind of, you got to have income instead of just expenses. Okay. Maybe, maybe I'll figure that out right now. How can I monetize this? Okay, just because I can't think, okay. If I can't monetize it purely for the content, obviously it's not HBO quality level content because no one's going to pay for it. But that'd be one. Way, that'd be the way. To, that'd be the easiest, obvious way. So I can't do that. Sponsors is obviously is another thing. Nobody's going to, you know, no, you know, same thing as that's the same thing as ads. So we got a conundrum. You know, we could just have the income be from another business that I also own, right? It's the loophole, just investing in myself. But what's the end result? I should have probably known this off air. I should have figured this out off air like a hundred episodes ago. Literally, literally, literally like at least 50 episodes. I should be figuring this out on the 99th. Okay, so right now I do look at it as like an investment. That's where the expenses are going. So where's the income? Okay, the income from this podcast. Okay. That is hard because I'm not really trying to sell this podcast as the money maker. This podcast is more of just like the brand. This podcast sells you on me as a brand. So other stuff will benefit from this. But right now, there's no direct or indirect way that it could, except for the money, except for the me talking about my, but that's just an ad, me talking about my other businesses. Like, okay, me advertising, <laughs> hire me. For thirty dollars, like that—that's that's an ad. That's fine. That's fine. That's the closest thing I could think of. That's not getting very far into the woodwork here. Okay. Well, sorry. I don't know. I just felt like maybe since we're talking about business and industry, you know, people that 
you know, in uh, uh, or industrious, I felt like maybe it was a good time to kind of turn this into a legitimate product. But I, I, it would have to be something like uh, uh, merch. That's another thing. Nobody would buy it. Nobody would buy it. Okay, that's not a problem. That's that. That's a, that. When I say merch. That doesn't mean swag. You see, see, when people sell merch, that usually just means like swag. Like shit that you don't actually need. Merch. Yeah, they call it merch because that's all it is. It's just merch for the sake of merch. It's a transaction. You're paying them money just to move a piece of merchandise. It's not about the actual product. No. My merch will actually be a utility. Okay, but then how does it? Imp okay, so my merch will actually be a product that actually provides a use other than that it's just a piece of product, you know, a, a piece of merch. Other than that, it just has my logo on it, which I don't even have a logo. I don't even have that. But so it doesn't have, it's not that, it's a product. Okay, we're getting some. We're getting close. Not gonna, not gonna, not a course. Not a course. Not doing a course. I'm very anti-course, and I don't think you can make money on being anti-course. No, that'd be that'd be hard. That'd be interesting. That'd be tough. But like, okay, I'm selling, not a course. I'm selling an anti-course. It's for people who hate paying for courses. But that's but it's a but it's it costs money, but it's not a course. Yeah, so we're, we're trying to we got to reinvent the wheel here, I think, because we got to think of a new wheel because all the other wheels are not good. Merch is so product. That's not a course. Okay, software. I'm not just trying to fill time. I could have ended the prod. I could have ended this anytime I wanted. I'm not just trying to fill time. This is a good. This is a good brainstorm session for, with one person. Okay, usually brainstorm. I think that usually means more than one person. Maybe no. I think you could have a one person brainstorm. So anyway, it's not a course. <laughs> Courses are scams. Even the best of the best courses are probably scams. If it's the kind of thing that all it is is like a website that you log into and you get a couple of videos that are private, a couple privated videos on on Vimeo, that's your fucking course. Yeah, those are scams. Just a stupid video series. That's your course. Oh, and you could get your you get my you get you could message me. You can message me, and you never and you never reply. You're not gonna get a reply. But for fifteen dollars a year, uh, it's usually a lot more than that. For fifteen hundred dollars, um, that'd be a lot. Usually they st they upsell. They make it seem like it's all like a good value. Like they say, so my premium ultimate package is normally 3500 but today and today only I'm offering it for like 70% off so now it's only 1499 for all this normally it's all this normally people are paying 3500 but now I, today only only today I'm charging just 1499 plus shipping and that's 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 how they get you, because all it is is a course. You pay them a huge boatload of money. All you get is an email with a special link in it that says, "Okay, here's your PDF. Here's your stupid. Here's your private videos." Whoops, I forgot to even make it private, so anybody could have just watched it this whole time. Well, here it is for fifteen hundred bucks. Yeah, fuck that. I'm not doing that. Also, nobody would buy that. Even you know, that's a scam, and also nobody would buy it. We want to actually make money on this. You know, you know, like Johnny Carson. 
He was really good, but also he got paid a shitload of money to be good. All right. And he, you need the money. He wouldn't have done it without, yeah, yeah, yeah I don't fucking know. I think he actually enjoyed uh, doing it just for the fun of it, too. I think he actually would have done it for not that much money, to be honest. But, but the money kind of goes with the territory. You, you can't just take a pay cut if you're Johnny Carson. So anyway, I, I, I don't know. So we'll think of a product that might be software, but that's way better than a course. See, that pisses me off about courts because all they are is just a YouTube video that was set to private and then there's a sequence of them whoa that's worth hundreds and thousands of dollars a sequence of videos a tutorial video in multiple parts okay yeah that's that's just shit that's worth shitloads of money see I'm an actual competent program I could actually make my own software So we're going to do something like that. We're going to do a piece of software that has a function to it. And then the rest of the podcast might not really have anything to do with that piece of software. But it doesn't matter. because you know, you know, That's still what the podcast is an infomercial. You know, that's kind of still the whole point of the, you know. <sighs> that's a pro. That's. That's another question I'm wondering. If that's not the whole point of the podcast, then does that make it a taxable thing or a thing you could write off for taxes? If the whole point isn't to sell that product, if that's just a supplementary way to, if that's just a way to make income, but not the whole point of it, then we got a problem. The podcast in and of itself has to be the product or at least it has to be a business expense a justifiable thing that is an expense so yeah we'll have to make it a part of the product in some way it can't just be a vlog because i don't know if you know this but i'm not a brand that is worth money to any like me as a brand isn't worth 15 bucks a month tim dillon is worth that but I'm not, and I'm not the type of person who thinks I am. So we won't be setting up a Patreon even as a gesture. <laughs> because uh, it's not going to, because I don't want to, it's not just, it's just not how I want to do things. I'm not really good at like slinging content. I don't know if you guys, if you noticed that yet. I'm not really good at slinging content. I'm good at just turning on the the thing, pressing the button, and, and then seeing what happens. And then, and then, it's usually not this bad. But we're doing it more often, so it's it's gonna be worse. It's gonna get worse. Like Johnny Carson did his show four times a week, so there are some times that were pretty bad, but it was still way better than this because they worked on it, they prepared, and they had segments. This has none of that. You know, like, like the best that we're going to get out of this is clips. But to put together clips, it's just so brutal, man. It's brutal. Like, there's some funny moments from the last episode. I was like, okay, that's a clip. That's a clip. But then when it comes time to actually make the clip, I go, Ugh. I don't want to watch. I don't want to look at my stupid face in 4K. Like, it's cool to look at a little bit, not to actually, Ugh, okay, ooh, that's fun. I'm clip that and put it out to the world now i'm not that satisfied with my own <laughs> you know like some they're okay sometimes they're okay but like not not really they're not that funny i don't they don't make me laugh they don't make me laugh so if they don't make me laugh i'm not gonna post them and this episode i don't think anything from it made me laugh if i were to rewatch it maybe maybe the first time it'll make me laugh but then the second time it won't so that's another thing i may maybe it is funny it's just that i've seen it more than once so like i'm not gonna think it's funny if i raise it by the time i post a clip i've already seen the clip why would i post it then if i don't think it's funny anymore because i don't think it's funny so what am i tell somebody else Hey, here's this thing I don't think it's funny anymore, but I, but I did a few minutes ago. Okay. 
But I don't think it's about him. Because that's my problem. That's not everybody has this problem. Like, I can think of something funny and be like, yeah, it's funny. And I could tell somebody else, you know, and they'll think it's funny. And then an hour later, I'll be like, okay, well, I, I, I'm done with that joke. I don't want to tell it to 50,000 more people. How the hell do people do that? I guess they just look at it as like a mean snout. I'm, I guess some people just enjoy it. They enjoy telling jokes. It's rare. Because most comedians, they're just plowing through it. They're just trying to get to the joke that they actually do want to tell, probably. You know, most of the time, they're just plowing through it. They don't fucking give a... F they're not... It doesn't look that fun to just do an act. They're just making those... Just doing that pattern. All you're doing is a... Is, you know, it's just like singing a song. Okay, here's this part. I'd rather sing a song than... At least songs have fun melodies. What jokes have good melodies? Like, oh, I can't wait to do this joke again. Where I get to say this word a certain way. Oh, fun. Yeah, that's you might as well sing. If you're going to sing a song more than once. It's probably a fun song, right? So that's how a joke should... Okay. I don't know, that's just something I just, I'm, I, I, that's just why I'm doing music these days, because I actually kind of like it. Like, I actually kind of like doing it. I don't like doing stand-up. Like, it's fun for two minutes. Or five minutes, maybe. You know, but stand-up? Nah. That's work. But it's other people, but like, music takes work too, but it's more fun, that it, so it doesn't feel like work. Maybe that's why. Some people just don't have, like, I have that for music. Don't have it for stand-up. I have it for podcasting. All right, well, this is a very serious episode because that's just what I, I wasn't in a funny mood. I, I was not in a funny mood. Life is serious for me. I got more problems than, you know, I got pro actual things. To, to, I got problems, not problems, but, like, I, can't, I got things to take seriously. I got a future at hand, man. I got a future at hand. I don't, I'm not just, I can't just give up. I'm not just, I can't just, oh yeah, I'm just going to give, yeah, I have, like I have nothing to lose or something like that. No, I'm not one of these people who just like, yeah, you know, I got nothing to lose. No, I don't, I don't, you know. So I'm sorry if it wasn't very funny, but you know, I'll be, you know, I got to do that. I got to pump these out. I got to upload them. So, you know, I got to do that. And, you know, it's only fucking 6 p.m. It's pretty late, actually. I don't know why I thought it was only 2 p.m. It's freaking 7 p.m. We didn't even talk about NVIDIA. Holy God. All right. We'll talk about that next week. I don't know why I just belabored. I didn't even talk about NVIDIA. Well, who gives a shit, man? I mean, who gives a shit? It's just money. I mean, it's just numbers. Music is eternal, man. Like, a good song is always a good song. A good joke is always a good joke. You know, as much as I don't even think it is, but like money, who gives a shit about money, man? Fuck it, hey, man. But it is good to have. It's fun to make, good to have. Fun to talk about making. Fun to talk about making money. Fun to talk about having money. Fun to talk about money. Not fun to not have money. Not fun to lose money. But it gets bored. It's like, okay, I made, okay, I'm, I made money, okay. Still not happy, or at least I'm still not fulfilled. Like, I'm, you know, I'm not, yeah, like, happy means not neutral. Like, you know, you could be neutral with money. Money, you know, it's not fulfilling. Okay, take that back, uh, it, it's fulfilling in a narcissistic way because it's like, oh, yeah, fuck, um, yeah. Because it, it's like a competition and that way it's it's satisfying. But there's other things, then the other part, of there's other things that you need. You need you need a community, you need creativity. If you're fat, if you let yourself go creatively, you, who cares how much money you have, you know? Yeah, I don't, know. I don't fuck it. But you gotta be rich to be creative too. All 
I just don't know how to end this. It should have ended like about two minutes ago when I was signing off, and then for some reason, video. Just fuck it.